Another live from OCC. After scrubbing in, uh, the biggest question I get from my patients is, well, there's several questions. In fact, I was interviewing a patient uh, a couple of minutes ago and she was saying, well, I'd love to see how you guys manage your organization from the, uh, the inside of the operating room. I mean, who's in charge of what, etc." So she, she definitely wanted to see some some organizational skills behind the scenes. Um, she also wanted to know how we sterilize equipment, how we keep um, our cleanliness and uh, our sterility inside and outside the operating room. So those are really good questions. And uh, right now as I don my uh, sterile protection, you can see that even though we're uh, around six or seven people inside the operating room, it's basically pretty silent unless we've got some rock and roll playing on. And right now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to introduce you to how we position our patient. So the patient is undergoing weight loss surgery. I have my assisting surgeon right here, my second assistant surgeon today, who's actually starting and finishing the procedure and uh, anesthesia is all the way up in front and to the right and you can see the screen so right now we're going to ask them to pass a tube a calibration tube down into the abdominal cavity yeah and you can see over here we're going to be using some devices this device is a called a stapling device these devices are manufactured by big international companies either um, medtronic Covidian, which is one huge company, and another one is Johnson & Johnson. And of course, these are the things that guarantee success, basically, because they are a state-of-the-art, up-to-date uh, stapling devices used in weight loss surgery. So, uh, they're gonna, we're going to introduce this into the abdominal wall through the equipment, and then I'm actually going to use another instrument, pencil thin instrument that goes through the abdominal wall. And we are going to go into this area, which is the lowest part of the stomach. What you're seeing on the screen is a stomach, a beautiful stomach right here. We're going to go see where the stomach finishes. One, two, three, four. And let me give you a quick review of what's going on on the screen. So. We've got the liver and we're retracting it with this metal device, just basically a metal stainless steel rod. It's called a liver retractor. And then over here, we're going to see the other side of the liver and we're going to see the gallbladder, that, uh, what is that, grayish um, structure. Well, that's where your bile accumulates. And then we've got a tube. Can you wiggle the tube, doctor? Wiggle the tube. Okay, wiggle. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, she needs more caffeine. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to staple. And I'm going to show you the back end of the stapler. And we're going to see how this staple actually not just staples, but divides. This is the dividing blade, which releases three lines of staples on either side of this blade. And once I release this, we are going to see how staples are on either side of this dividing line. So we're going to go ahead and continue stapling. Now, one of the things that makes our surgeries so uneventful is that, well, we select our patients extremely well. And uh, once we select them, even though most of our patients come from far away, we select them and we prep them for surgery. So it's not the same to get a surgery if you're extremely overweight and you haven't had a chance to stabilize your metabolism, diminish your excess weight, especially the one that's associated to a fatty liver because fatty liver is exactly, that liver, that organ is exactly where all the metabolism of your, 
uh, nutrition aspects and medications and even anesthetics that we're using, all of that happens right there at the liver. So our patients are prepared before the surgery to be able to cope with these higher demands of a surgical procedure, which means that once you have a good prep prepared patient, then you're going to end up with a good result. So surgery is typically around 15 to 20 minutes in this case. And then once we finish the surgical procedure, the recovery is around 30 minutes in the recovery area typically. And then from there, um, once the recovery happens, patients are moved back to their room where they finish recovering and are usually walking a couple of hours after the surgical procedure. So right here we have a gauze. We're just going to see that there is nothing in the back. So anyways, these surgeries, like I said, we're about to finish the surgical procedure. But going back to the organization of what happens inside the operating room, as you can see, is very little talk is happening. Uh, most of these procedures are streamlined. In order to understand uh, further, you just have to see what's going on around, uh, around the surgeon and around my staff. This is why we also record 360 Lives, which is going to be the next surgery, uh, which gives you the ability to scroll around inside the operating room and check at every angle, 360 degrees, at every member and what their activity is. So we're going to pull the stomach out. Once I pull the stomach out, not all of it, the small portion that's been removed. So the patient ends up with a much smaller stomach. So we've removed part of the stomach and we're going to let the last phase of the surgical procedure, which is stitching the um, staple line. So if there's any questions, don't yes. forget to, yes? Dr. Keith, um, what kind of surgery? Oh, this is a... This is a procedure called a gastric sleeve. It's a first time patient receiving a gastric sleeve. This is usually our first line of defense. Uh, why? Well, we, we don't like to do more aggressive procedures because if you can get the best bang for your buck, in other words, if you can get the best result, lose the excess weight you want with a mild procedure, why would you want to go ahead and do a, a more aggressive procedure? So sometimes patients want to select the most aggressive procedure because they're going to lose 10, 15 more pounds. The problem with that is that most of these more aggressive procedures, actually you end up losing more body weight, but not necessarily body fat. So you end up losing muscle, uh, lean mass, hair, uh, fingernails, just the essential stuff you didn't know you were going to lose. And ultimately, patients end up with more or less the same excess body fat, but lose a lot more lean mass with the more aggressive procedures. So this is why if we can get the desired weight loss with a much lesser aggressive procedure, which basically is this one, which diminishes the size of the stomach, but lets you eat and lets you absorb food, well, why not use this and a good, nice follow-up program instead of going the more aggressive route? And the last reason that we don't do the aggressive ones is when these aggressive ones fail, and they do fail, well, you have no other option left. Uh, with this one, you started with the lowest possible procedure, and there are many options to fix it if it fails. So that's all the time we have for t today. Uh, we're going to keep on this series, and we're going to talk about all the aspects of surgery, uh, covering them here directly live from OCC. Thanks for watching.